So what other things do we have in EDIUS 9? Well, first off, we've got some support for some new formats. So for example, these clips are taken with a Canon camera. And you can see here they're taking in cinema raw light format, which is a new high quality Canon format that's now supported inside of EDIUS 9. And obviously, if I take one of those, throw it onto the timeline, pop into the primary color corrector again, you'll notice immediately that it's applying the right Canon log space to that and then converting it to whatever your current project format is. Another interesting thing is that it actually supports DNG files natively. With EDIUS 8, you could load DNG files by getting hold of an Adobe DNG codec that was freely available, but it wasn't very good because it loaded them up in 8-bit and then they didn't work tremendously well. Well, now Grass Valley have written native support for loading DNG files into EDIUS, so it works. But we still do get the problem that they don't actually play back tremendously well. In fact, you're going to have to convert the files after you get them in. It also, if you're filming with, say, a Blackmagic Cinema camera, you're bringing a video image, which is a bunch of stills, as you can see here. I'm loading out quite a small clip, which is about 400 frames. So it takes a little bit of time to get it in, and it doesn't bring the sound in or any of the other metadata. Yeah, I can take it, I can put it onto the timeline. You notice everything's taking a little bit of time to update, but it is native support for Blackmagic DNG as opposed to just using the Adobe codec. And the good thing about it is it's 10-bit support, so it does it better than it does in the past, and it's native. It also means if you're in Mink, then you can go to a folder that's got some GNG files in them, and up it pops and you can see the DNG files inside of Mink. The best way to deal with DNG files if you bring them in this way is just to bring them into the bin, right click and then choose convert and convert it to a different format. So I'm going to convert it to a Grass Valley HQX file. You notice I've got a couple of different variations here, but HQX will be the obvious thing to go for. And then save and then it takes that and then it converts it. And you can do lots of files at once. So if you can bring all the files into EDIUS, you can convert them all into HQ files just by selecting the lot and then just choosing the file format. It'll just take a bit of time, but once it's done, you'll have files that work a lot better. The major things obviously being the support for in the Canon RAW light format, and those do work really well on the timeline. There've been some nice tweaks to the interface. First of all, you might even notice up here, the standard view we have of a clip here where you've got the picture and then the name has changed from EDIUS 8. In EDIUS 7, it used to look like this. You'd have a thumbnail with the words underneath it. In EDIUS 8, they actually put the words up top and the thumbnail underneath. Well, in EDIUS 9, they've swapped it back to how it was in EDIUS 7. This is basically down to a lot of users saying, we really like it to go back to how it was, so they decided to change it. And all the other interface changes are pretty much like that. So for example, if you look here, down on the timeline, you can see here the keying area of EDIUS is actually a little bit brighter than it was in EDIUS 8. In EDIUS 8, this area merged into the background of the timeline. In EDIUS 9, it stands out so you can see it a bit better. There are a couple of occasions where the little close boxes and dialogues were just too small to see, especially on a 4K screen. Well, those have been changed so they work better. There's a nice one to do with sequences. So if I just double right click there and change the name of the sequence, and give it a nice long name, you'll notice that the nice long name actually pops up here. If I was to do that in EDIUS 8, it actually would chop it off, as you can see here. So you would only see the first few characters, not the rest of it. Now you can see much longer names. Of course, you make it too long, it's still going to go out of the screen. Let's just add a lot of rubbish. There is a limit to how long it can get, but you've got nice longer sequence names. But the changes are basically like that. They're not huge overall changes like it was between EDIUS 7 and EDIUS 8. In the mask filter, they've added a little button here to make the picture fit the screen. It's in the layout, it wasn't in the mask, they just put it in there again just to make things a little bit nicer. In the system settings, when you actually are setting up a project, there's a wizard. So let me start up the project wizard. This was there inside of previous versions of EDIUS in 7 and 8. But what was always missing was that it would always set up projects that had six channels in it. Now, most people wouldn't need six channels, they'd only be doing stereo, so they wouldn't need six or more. Well, now the project preset wizard let you choose the resolution you want to make, choose the bit depth, and then you can choose the number of audio channels, which is great for people who set up lots of systems like I do, because whenever I used to run the wizard, I'd have to go into each project preset and change it back to stereo rather than being six channels. So again, nice little change there just to make life a little bit easier for people. The other big change we've got between EDIUS 8 and 9 is that you can now output video 
from a UHD 50p or 60p project. Now this is the one thing in the new updates that is only in the work group version of EDIUS. So you need the work group version, but if you've got that and you've got a card that can output 50 or 60p UHD, like some of the black magic cards, it's the more expensive ones. It's not things like the Intensity Pro 4K, it's the 4K Extreme and the 4K Extreme 12G and some of the Ultra Studios. They can actually output video in 50 or 60p UHD. So in EDIUS, Eight, if you made a 50 or 60p UHD project, no matter what hardware you had in there, it would pop up with this little thing saying, sorry, can't share that on a TV. With EDIUS 9, you can now do that as long as you've got the work group version and a card that's capable of it, which is great because a lot more people are filming in 50 or 60p UHD. Since we've got cameras like the Panasonic GH5 and a lot of other cameras coming out that can do that kind of thing. So it's great that we can now watch that properly when we're editing 50 and 60p UHD with EDIUS. On the hardware front, they're still supporting the same kind of cards as they did previously. They've specifically tested a few cards with EDIUS 9, some Blackmagic and Arja cards, the ones that I've got listed here. Doesn't mean old ones aren't going to work. So in this system, I have got an old fashioned Intensity Pro. That's not in the list of things that works, but it actually works. I've got a Blackmagic Mini Monitor 4K that also works, even though that isn't on the list of things that's supposed to work. So just because it's on the list doesn't mean it's not going to work. Things we know definitely won't work are some old Grass Valley cards. So there's the Grass Valley NX and SP and the Grass Valley HD Storm. These actually worked in EDIUS 8, but they weren't officially supported. But with EDIUS 9, they've now stopped them working completely. So now if you have got a Storm HD or one of these old NX cards, they won't work at all in EDIUS 9. But say most of the other cards that you got will work. Even Matrox cards, which have been discontinued, are supposed to work, although I haven't tested that myself. Another change that you've got with EDIUS 9 is that you can actually have EDIUS 8 and EDIUS 9 on the same system. Now, up to now, you've never been able to have two versions of EDIUS on the same computer. As soon as you put one on, it takes the other one off. Now you can have EDIUS 8 and EDIUS 9 together. So you can see on this system here, I've actually got EDIUS 8 and EDIUS 9 installed. It's an update for EDIUS 8 called EDIUS 8.53, which came out a few days ago. It did fix a few bugs, but the main thing is it will coexist with EDIUS 9. You only have the one version of Mink, so obviously it's the version of Mink that goes with EDIUS 9, but you end up with both of these on the computer at the same time. You can't run them at the same time. If I just double click on the EDIUS 8 icon with EDIUS 9 already running, it just pops up with EDIUS 9. But if I was to shut EDIUS 9 down and open up EDIUS 8, you'll notice I can now go into EDIUS 8. Why would you want to do this? Well, it's vaguely possible that you want to upgrade to EDIUS 9, but you're working with a bunch of other people that are using EDIUS 8. So for projects where you're collaborating, you're going to carry on using EDIUS 8. But for new stuff that you're just doing on your own, you're going to do EDIUS 9. Because if you edit or start a project in EDIUS 9, it's not really backwardsly compatible with EDIUS 8. I know I've tested out with a few of my own projects and I've had no problems opening up a project I've edited and saved in EDIUS 9 in EDIUS 8. But at some point it's going to go wrong, primarily because obviously the big new thing in EDIUS 9 is new color spaces in the project, which weren't there in EDIUS 8. So what does EDIUS 8 do about it? Then there are going to be some more filters and effects and things that will be added over the life of EDIUS 9. Again, they won't be in EDIUS 8. So I wouldn't trust the fact that in the future you'll be able to open EDIUS 9 projects in EDIUS 8. So if you've got a whole bunch of people that are working on EDIUS 8 and you're collaborating with them, just stick with EDIUS 8. But for your own stuff, you could use EDIUS 9 and just use the new stuff that's in that. So that's the whole point of having two versions on there at the same time. You do need a license for both. So obviously the license and the way EDIUS is activated is exactly the same as it was with EDIUS 8, all done through the interweb. With the pro version, you need to go on the internet once a month to keep the license going. With the workgroup version, you don't. So all that's remained exactly the same but you will need two licenses, one for EDIUS 8 and one for EDIUS 9 when they're on the same machine. Another reason for having two versions is you might have a bunch of plugins that you've paid for with EDIUS and plugins that work with EDIUS 8 might not work with EDIUS 9. The people that make the plugins might want you to pay for an update. They may give it to you free, they might want you to pay for it. So again, if you're using a bunch of plugins and there aren't free updates to work with EDIUS 9, then maybe you'll stick with EDIUS 8, but use EDIUS 9 for other projects you're not using those plugins on. But that's the point. People have asked for it, now they've done it. I think most people probably won't bother, they'll just go straight ahead and use like EDIUS 9, but I'm using both on the same system. The other new feature I mentioned in the first part of this tutorial 
and that is that you can now make MPEG-4 files in 10-bit as opposed to 8-bit and in 422 color space as opposed to the standard 420 color space. You can film in better quality into 10-bit MPEG-4 files in some cameras now. Well, with ADS-9, you can also make them in the same quality. So that's basically better quality output files, which has got to be a good thing. It's not in every program. I did notice today as I was making this, a thread popped up on the Adobe forums saying, oh, why can't I make 10-bit MP4 files in Adobe? The answer is no, you can't at the moment. Well, you can in ADS-9. Finally, there have been a couple of changes inside of Mink. So, for example, the biggest one is probably the option to hide offline clips. I actually get this quite a lot because I'll use Mink to catalogue some clips. They'll be on an external hard drive or something, and then the next time I turn the computer on, they're not there anymore. And, of course, Mink pops up. The clips are in the catalogue, but they've got little red dots on them showing that they're offline. Now you've got a nice little tick box here just to show clips which are on local drives, so on drives that are actually connected, which is nice. You can just show clips which actually exist as opposed to ones you've catalogued but aren't there anymore. Another thing which is new in the storyboard section is you do have an option to very simply make two copies of a clip when you're editing. So for example, I've got a clip here and I want to use a couple of bits out of it. I will mark an in point, go to the end, mark an out point, and now what I want to do is use some more of that clip later on. Now before I've been copying and pasting, but now all I have to do is choose cut. And it will keep the first clip and make a second clip ready for me to chop a bit out of it. And obviously Mink also supports DNG clips. I've got a tutorial on the YouTube channel about using Mink and using it to import still images. And this is another way where you could use it to actually bring in DNG clips, because what you do is you point it at the clips, register them to the catalogue, and then once they're in the catalogue, you choose set as sequence and it changes it into a video clip. Not sure it's any faster than doing it inside of Edius, but it's just another way of approaching DNG clips. Now, of course, you can upgrade from Edius 8 directly to Edius 9. There's an upgrade from Pro to Pro, from Pro to Workgroup, from Workgroup to Workgroup. And also, if you decide you don't really need some of the features in the workgroup versions, you can actually save a little bit of money by upgrading from the workgroup version to the pro version of Edius. There's a little section on my website explaining what the differences are, so make sure you know what you're losing if you do choose to upgrade from workgroup to pro, but it does save you a little bit of money. And pro does an awful lot of stuff. Like I said, the entire thing I've been doing here is all being done on the pro version. There's also the option to upgrade from practically any old version of EDIUS to EDIUS 9. With EDIUS 8, you could only upgrade from EDIUS 7 to EDIUS 8. They did what's called a jump upgrade offer for a couple of months, but it didn't last. Now it's a permanent offer, so if you've got an old version of EDIUS, any EDIUS from EDIUS 2 to EDIUS 7, or a copy of EDIUS Neo, then you can upgrade to EDIUS 9 using the special jump upgrade offer. And there's a jump upgrade to the pro version and the workgroup version. All you'll need is the serial number from your old copy. So when you come to install EDIUS 9, it just asks for the serial number. The old version doesn't have to be on the system. You just put the serial number in and then you'll be able to install your EDIUS 9. And I think some of the first adopters of EDIUS 9 will actually be people who are doing that. They like their own EDIUS 6 or EDIUS 7 and they really want some of the new stuff that's been introduced over the years, so they can now jump up to EDIUS 9 for quite a reasonable cost. And of course, EDIUS 8 and EDIUS 9 are the only ones that actually support Windows 10 properly, and you're practically being forced onto Windows 10 by Microsoft with all sorts of things these days. So if you want a version of EDIUS that works properly on Windows 10, then you're going to want EDIUS 9. You can order EDIUS 9 from the DVC training website. If you do this, you'll actually be buying it from the European distributors. I'm just acting as an agent for them. But then if you buy it through the links on my website, I'll give you support on installation and setup and so on on EDIUS once you've got it. So just pop onto my website, www.dvctraining.co.uk, where you can order your EDIUS upgrade or jump upgrade. I'll put links in the description below as well. So that wraps up my short introduction to what's new in EDIUS 9.0, which is released in November 2017. There will be more updates, and of course, if you buy your EDIUS 9 now, you'll get all those updates free, and I'll do more videos about those when they're released. We're expecting them every couple of months. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos about EDIUS, as well as other programs like DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Encore. 
And also follow me on the DBC Training Facebook page where I'll just post updates and information about stuff on the world of digital video that I think you'll find useful. So that's it and I'll see you next time.